Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, why do cyclists keep getting banned? We're not talking about doping, we're talking about everyday cyclists being banned from paths, roads, and whole town centres. Plus, like, it was possibly one of the bleakest moments of my life. Jeez, how ugly is his body? Crikey. <laughs> he was suitably schooled by the wily Mariana Voss. <laughs> as a three and a half kilo toy poodle named Biscuit. This week in the world of cycling, we learn that even the best in the world still make junior mistakes. Firstly, here is the lead man at the recent professional triathletes organization PTO series race at the weekend, trying to take a water bottle from the side of the road. You ready? He misses, then he misses again, then one more time, and then one more miss. And then I guess he's just dehydrated. <laughs> yeah, feeling slightly sheepish. Uh, then Lorena Vibes became the latest pro cyclist to celebrate a victory too early, and she was suitably schooled by the wily Mariana Voss. I never made that mistake no? personally, Si, but only because I was never really in that position to make that mistake in the first place. No, me neither, to be fair. No, good. Uh, we also learned this week that, and you're not going to believe this, the GCN Camelback bottles have arrived! Woohoo! And when we say we've learned, it's because we actually have them in our hands. We've got red podium bottles, black podium bottles, plus the all new metal podium VSS bottle, where the GCN logo is kind of in a raw metal finish. It does look cool, doesn't it? It does. Have we got one? I yeah. don't know. Why, why have we not brought one? Cut. Going, oh, we have got one. <laughs> we have got one. We have got one. We're going to need to zoom in on that, bad boy. Yeah. I'm not referring to you as a bad boy. <laughs> this is, yeah. I've been zoomed on enough recently. So. <laughs> uh, they were worth the wait, I think it's fair to yeah. say. I'd like to say it was thanks to Killian that they've arrived. But it wasn't thanks to Killian, was it? No, it wasn't. Uh, what is actually the latest with Killian? Oh, and I'll upload it. Well, you don't need to worry about that anymore, mate. I've sorted Killian out. What are you doing? What's this? What's the camera? Oh, God. Going by guy. Killian, just fix the f loader. You useless piece of. You know how many hacks and bodges people have been trying to send in for the last couple of months, unable to do so because you can't do your job? Oh, nice one, mate. My pleasure. Uh, Killian is now fully focused, obviously, on the upload. He says we're looking at another week or so. There we go. Anyway, this week we are talking about why cyclists keep getting banned. Yeah, and as we said in the introduction, we're not talking about doping. Yeah. No. There are far fewer cases of doping in cycling than there were 10 years ago, aren't there? Uh, which most people are taking to be a good sign. What we're talking about instead is why cyclists keep getting banned from cycling in public areas. Forgive me. If I go on a little rant, if you, I may. You can go ahead, Cy. Si. Okay, well, I actually took the liberty of filming something. Oh, have you? Yeah, cue Cy si rant. This is on my commute home, okay? It is a road and a pavement and a massive bike lane right next to a construction site. Except for the last few months, whilst the road has remained open and the footpath has remained open, the bike lane has been officially closed. So I can ride my bike on the road, no problem. I can walk on the footpath, no problem. But if I want to cycle on the cycle path, I can't. Which is utterly bonkers. Why? Why can bikes not be trusted to ride down the bike path, but yet we can be trusted to ride down a road? Or are we not supposed to ride down the road either? Good rant, mate. Thanks. I can see how that would be quite annoying. Well, yeah, and I just don't get it, right? And there are lots of examples of this kind of thing when you look for it as well. I saw this one from another UK city where a cycle route was closed for 18 months due to safety concerns around a building site. The alternative was a detour onto a really dodgy, busy road that would have added 10 minutes onto people's journeys. Well, the good news in this case is that the route has reopened. It has. Uh, following pressure, we understand, from local cyclists and the council. But this strikes me as part of the issue, in some ways. Uh, the first response was to shut it to cyclists. Why? Because they can, maybe? Mm. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist or anything, 
But it definitely gives you the impression that cyclists are like the lowest priority users. Either that or health and safety spreadsheets see as, as a risky proposition. I'd have a budget big enough to run a world tour team, I reckon, if I was given a quit every time I went past a cyclist <laughs> dismount sign. What about uh, bikes being banned from pedestrianised places? Well, yeah. There's been a rash recently here in the UK, hasn't there? Towns like Grimsby and Scunthorpe have introduced £100 spot fines for anyone caught cycling in the town centre, which is actually something that Prague tried to introduce six years ago until it was overturned by a legal action a few months after they tried to do it. Yeah, I mean, the question you've got to ask is why the ban in the first place? Well, I think there's a few things going on, isn't there? Uh, firstly, there are a minority of people riding bikes who are dickheads, yeah. aren't there? Yeah, uh, right. Just like there are dickhead car drivers yes. or dickhead dog walkers. <laughs> some people are just dickheads, <laughs> is the conclusion, yeah. really, isn't it? Uh, the issue with this, though, is that for some reason, it's the anti-social cyclist that's making the headlines at the moment. It's well, yeah, that's it. A few people are calling out that cycling is part of a culture war, mm. isn't it? Cycling is not just cycling, it is another thing to irritate a certain part of the population who feel like it's eroding their way of life. It's almost like in this country, cycling is the new Brexit, it, isn't it? It is, isn't what it? What I think yeah. exacerbates the problem is that the dangers posed by cars and motor vehicles has been completely normalised in many respects. And yeah. as we've heard in the past, we have been so conditioned to think that cars are king we don't even know it. No, that's true, isn't it? So yeah, bikes seem worse than cars, even though cars kill yeah. gazillions more people, yeah. And there is one other thing yeah. as well, isn't it? Something we've touched on before, which is this issue of cyclists being dehumanised. You remember that research that said that cyclists were considered less than human, like insects, I believe. I think I do, yes. That was the effect of safety attire on perceptions of cyclist dehumanisation published in volume 95 of Transportation Research, part F. I think it was Traffic, Psychology and Behaviour, wasn't it? That was the one. I, I think that Yeah, was I remember it well. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was reminded of it when I was reading this article in the Guardian newspaper. So there is, everyone, a new way to stay safe when you're out riding on public roads. And it's not a high-vis jacket, no. it's not lights, it's not protective clothing, it's not even helmets. It's a toy poodle. Yeah, we, we kid you not. <laughs> Oh, bless you. We kid you me. not. We carrying on or are we editing that out? I think we should probably edit it out. Okay, right. yeah, just... I mean, this is no joke. Stephen Herrick has a three and a half kilo toy poodle named Biscuit that he has in a blue pouch around his neck. Mm. I should point out a toy poodle is a breed. When I first read this, I thought it was literally a toy <laughs> that looked very, very much like a real dog. Anyway, he says that its superpower is to transform a man in lycra into a human being. Uh, tradespeople give him thumbs up, pedestrians on shared lanes move politely out of the way, willingly so, police give him a smile, and motorists wave him through junctions even when it's not his right of way. So it completely transforms the way that many people look at him. He's no longer just an annoying cyclist when he's out riding with his toy poodle Biscuit. It is really interesting, isn't it? So my kids are not as cute as Biscuit. Are they not? Not anywhere near, no. But it's my experience, frankly, when riding a cargo bike too. People treat you differently. Mm. And, well, I don't know, yeah, just people are just nicer, basically. Yeah. Well, I have done some riding with our dog on my back in a backpack before, and it was quite incredible how many people fawned over him and wanted to take a photo or a video. There were a lot of smiles. How about it, Dan? Given the success of the video, from the weekend that had you half naked on the thumbnail. Are you sure it was the dog? I'm, I'm pretty sure because when I didn't have the dog and when I don't have the dog, no one fawns or once takes any photos of me. Uh, it was my dog, I think. Okay, bad luck, mate, yeah. yeah. So the point is that cyclists are, for one reason or another, dehumanised. We don't seem like people when we're riding bikes. We're just cyclists. Yeah. Weird, isn't it, that people would rather not squash a toy poodle <laughs> yes. than a human being. It's slightly more easily squashable, I, I don't know. Well, that is true, actually, yeah. I mean, if you're hanging it from like a pouch around your neck, mm. it's fairly like vulnerable there, isn't it, yeah. I thought. But uh, anyway, um, what do you lot think about all of this, okay? Why do cyclists keep getting banned from paths and public places? And is it the experience that you've had where you live?
get involved in the comments section down below. It's genuinely a topic we quite like to unpick, this one, isn't it? It would be, yes. Uh, probably not from people that live in Copenhagen or Amsterdam, where no. cycling infrastructure <laughs> is something we can all be jealous of. That's it. People from the Netherlands are a little bit like Canadians when it comes to winter. Aren't they? It's just like, <laughs> oh, I tune into this video just to see what life was like in awful places. Yeah. How where... do you live where you live? <laughs> Yeah, basically. Um, I don't know, maybe there's the odd path in the Netherlands that gets close to bikes. Yeah, quite possibly. Let us know. If there's a bad part of the Netherlands for riding a bike, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> and now it's time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we'll start with a bit of a check-in to your thoughts about Dan's video from Saturday. Yeah. Dan, I have pulled out a few of my personal favourite comments. Glad to hear it. Carry on. Okay, well, uh, Pulsa wrote, Damn, I was having lunch when this photo came up. Right. Uh, Chris CK14 chimed in with, E.T. phones <laughs> home, which I thought was particularly witty. Mm -hmm. um, Ian Kitchy Kitchen uh, had a sudden urge to uh, to watch the film. E.T. E. E. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sweaty Shammy uh, thought he'd logged on to OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, he uh, hadn't though. I checked. Uh, there was literally no activity on my page that day. Really? Or the previous 365 days. Oh, that's a shame. Um, anyway, uh, Paul Cannings recommended that you don't go out in a strong breeze. It's probably a good recommendation, but slightly harsh, I would yeah, say. A little bit. Not as harsh though as this one from Wenzel Chris 65. Jeez, how ugly is his body? Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, grossjambon.cc just put, nice tits, Dan. I mean, I really enjoy reading all the comments over the weekend, but you did miss one from someone that asked me if my nipples had had an argument because they're so far apart. <laughs> I did try to find it this morning, but I don't know what platform it was on. Oh, I did miss that one. Yeah, uh, although I did see the one from Mary on Twitter oh, who yes. said, my husband is as skinny as you and old. He's disgusting. <laughs> Have you finished now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just feel sorry for Mary's husband, quite frankly. Well, not for me. Not really, no. Uh, okay. I mean, Mary I mean, did seem quite angry well, about there were, lots of things, didn't she? <laughs> there, was, there was quite a lot of sympathy for Mary's husband from all quarters. I hope he gets to read it. Uh, okay, anyway. You finished? Uh, Is that all of the comments you, you pulled out? Well, they, those were just from Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the YouTube comments next week because uh, there's plenty of them. Yeah. Um, no, I am only joking. The vid was brilliant. And the only thing that's weirder than your nipples is what people seem to think is fine to write on the internet, Okay. basically. Yeah. Do you know what I think? I th yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of water of a duck's back. As soon as you become a YouTuber, as we've been for 11 years now, you quickly get a thick skin, don't you? You do, yeah. some harsh comments, so they... I like water of a duck's back, I get them all the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, we don't Most of them are in good spirits, aren't oh, they? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, great banter. We don't often get comments on nipples, though, do we? No, Thankfully. no, it's not often. No. It's a first for everything, isn't it? I thought they were fine as well. Did you, mate? <laughs> I did, yeah, if I'm honest. How about your wife? Uh, I'm not showing her the video yet. I was just Lorraine, to think. Lorraine thought they were disgusting. She said her husband is skinny as well and old, and he's disgusting. <laughs> Should we move on to some, yeah. some tech news Let's now, move on. rather yeah, yeah. than that thumbnail from Saturday? So BMC released a new bike last week. It's their latest generation of their road machine, which road machine should I say, which is one of the original endurance road bikes. Yeah, it has always been a very cool looking bike, and this version three is no exception. Slightly taller at the front end, BMC say, but the big news is the massive tyre clearance, up to 40 millimetres 40. wide. Okay. Uh, they've said that the handling has not been compromised at all to fit them in. Uh, the rear end is still nice and tight and nimble, for example. Like. It's also got built-in storage on the down tube and an integrated rear light, which I always, th always think is a great idea. Yeah, it's super cool, isn't it? And uh, MV also launched a bike last week called the Frey. It's a very similar sounding beast to the BMC, taking road bike pedigree, giving it an endurance twist. So it too can take wider tyres, up to 40 millimetres, and has onboard storage. That's right, just like BMC. Now Envy, you'll remember, have been known of late for some, uh, well, frankly, engaging in some grade A marketing <laughs> um, So do you wanna know how they describe this one? I've been looking forward to this, yes please. The fray is but an arrow in the performance quiver. Oh, performance quiver. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell you that this bike is for times when aspirational roads and objectives inspire long hours in the saddle. Oh, well, that's put me off. That's not for me. No. <laughs> Short hours. I reckon you could ride it for 30 minutes as well, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, anyway, talking about aspirational roads, what do you think to this piece of Strava art? Well, it looks nice, but there are no roads at all, are there? Looks like they've been swimming. Well, 
Pekka Takala from Finland took to a frozen ocean to create this bear, which also happens to be the logo for Otso Cycles, whose Wahila gravel bike he was using for his icy ride. He's on the bike on the ice, was he? Well, apparently, yeah. Uh, Canadians, the ball is now in your court. <laughs> <laughs> on to a good news story now of an 80-year-old cyclist from Bridlington who's planning on riding the 100 miles from Bridlington to Bradford Royal Infirmary this coming Saturday. Uh, that is going to mark the 20th anniversary of his of hospital staff there, saving his life. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. David Butland fell suddenly ill in 2004 with an infection that affected his heart, lungs and kidneys. It almost took his life, but 20 years on, he is alive and well. Well enough to do 100 miles on a bike. Uh, so in doing so, he'll be raising money for Bradford Hospital's charity. It's really cool, that, doesn't it? Doesn't it, yeah. Uh, good news for cyclists in British Columbia now, because new laws have been implemented to make it compulsory for motorists to give cyclists at least three feet of room when they're overtaking, which rise to five foot if they're overtaking at in excess of 30 miles per hour. Now, three feet is like just over a no, just under a metre, yeah. actually, isn't it? So not huge, but it's a step in the right direction for cyclists there, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I guess we give it a thumbs up. I'd say we give that a we thumbs, up, a thumbs yeah. up, right. Uh, meanwhile, back here in the UK, we're getting a new dedicated bike lane over Hammersmith Bridge in Greater London, which has been closed to traffic since cracks were found in 2019. Yeah, so let's just put cyclists and pedestrians <laughs> on the dangerous bridge that's cracking. And obviously we're, we're quite a bit lighter than lorries and Range Rovers, aren't we? You certainly are, just about <laughs> uh, The bridge has already been open to pedestrians, but requires cyclists to, ready for it? Yeah, you've got to dismount at the moment. Oh, Do you want a pound for that? You can have a quid, yeah. yeah. Um, no, actually, you don't have to pay me because apparently that'll change soon. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, there will be a dedicated cycling lane after a £2.9 million injection of funding. But it illustrates the point from before, doesn't it? First thing is just like, well, you can't cycle over there. Yeah. You can wheel your bike you over. You can wheel your bike over, you can walk <laughs> over. I mean, what happens if you run really fast whilst wheeling your bike? Is that banned? It might, might make the cracks worse. Well, and I reckon I'm less stable running with a bicycle with, than with I would be riding on. it. Well, yeah. I can, I can imagine you would be, yeah. I quite feel like I'm proving a point, just running over the bridge, like some kind of like, <laughs> Maybe running's banned. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, let's so. finish cycling shorts this week with some cycling kit of our very own. Ready? Uh, yeah, well, no, hang on a minute. All right, Let me can't get it. I've just been looking at Hank modelling this on Instagram. Modelling it very well indeed, Have actually, you? yeah. Uh, so this week sees the launch of jersey number one in the new GCN Ahu Edition series. Yeah, so Editions is the new GCN slash Ahu road kit comprising of a series of limited edition jerseys. See where we're going yeah. with that? Uh, so each jersey is going to be numbered on the collar. Uh, this one, you can see. I mean, this oh yeah, <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, I just says uh, <laughs> men's <laughs> size medium, but no, it's on the collar. On yeah. the collar, not the back of the jersey. So yeah, each jersey will be numbered on the collar. And there's also a dedicated bib short to accompany the range. So it's a little bit uh, like less premium price-wise yeah. than the stuff that we get to wear on the channel. It is. But it looks proper cool, doesn't it? it and does this jersey cool. feels every inch the premium jersey. It looks nice, I it would looks say. looks well good, yeah. Uh, we're planning on releasing a new jersey on a monthly basis, not on a specific date each month, but roughly every month. But as mentioned, these jerseys are limited. Once they're gone, they are gone. Uh, the first one has already been selling very fast, so if you'd yes. like one, you need to head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com quickly before they are all gone. Indeed, yeah. Uh, now, one last thing, uh, two last things, actually. Uh, you can see that we're wearing some jazzy new T-shirts. Oh, yes. La Doyenne. The oldest of the uh, the spring classics. Which Does it, La Doyenne means old lady, doesn't it? It means old lady, yes. It means old lady. <laughs> there you go then. <laughs> Probably quite suits, suitable that I'm wearing this one. <laughs> anyway, these are also available on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com to wrap up the classics campaign, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just chuckling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man, yeah. laughs> I hadn't realised how apt that was until you just pointed it out. Yeah, there we go. I mean, you'd think they're cruel in the uh, Instagram comments, and then you sit next to Sai. 
That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't forget as well that our Topeak giveaway is still open. So you've got until 10 a.m. UK time this Friday to enter. So just head to the competition link in the description below. Oh, dearie me, and answer a simple question. Let's put yourself in with a chance of getting a Pack Go X bike box uh, and slash or a tune-up station. Yes, there are a couple of territory restrictions on it in terms of uh, where you can apply from. So please check you can enter where you are. Good luck. Hack, forward slash bodge of the week now. Uh, the first one came in from Richard. So I know it's a mountain bike and an e-bike at that, <gasps> but I thought this was quite a good hack. Arrived at the trail center and found that I had not packed the cover plate for the battery. Improvised by stucking the cavity with a piece of towel and then taping a piece of cardboard over the gap using a Velcro strap. Worked a treat despite the snow and ice on the trails. Well, fair play. I mean, that might... Nothing worse than getting anywhere and, and noting you've forgotten a key piece of equipment for your ride, is there? Yeah. Oh, man. What's the worst thing you've forgotten? Probably shoes or something, or shorts. I've, yeah, I've forgotten a pair of shorts, and it, like it was possibly one of the bleakest moments of my life, going around the start line at a race, <laughs> trying to get a spare pair of shorts. Yeah. The things I saw, honestly. <laughs> Scarred to this day. Um, anyway, so I think that's a hack, basically. I'd say that's a hack as yeah. well, although I don't know how you reinsert your battery and then forget to put your cover on straight afterwards. Not everyone's as organised as you, mate. I oh, know, I have you... forgotten shorts before. Oh, there you go then. Well, you can't you can't talk then, can you really? No. <laughs> right. Um, no, I like that. Thanks for sending that one in, Richard. Hack from both of us. Yeah, indeed. Um, do we know how Richard sent it to us in the absence of Killian's I think we might have delved into the archives this week whilst Killian's still fixing things. Ah, thanks Richard for sending this one from 2016. <laughs> uh, next up, Michael, um, my turbo trainer build. Uh, so Michael, just, Michael is from Lawrence, Kansas, USA. He says there are expensive adapters that do the same thing as this cheap plumbing fitting that cost me a few bucks. So uh, I can't quite understand. Oh, I guess it's a bike that's specific for the trainer, uh, so the brakes oh, don't even I really see. need to work, but he's trying to align the brake lever hoods, make sure they're at the same height. Ah, you've, yeah, okay, now I'm with you. Sorry, Michael. It was, yeah, there we go. I thought it was something to do with a turbo trainer, but no, it's a brake lever alignment tool, which I think is amazing. Yeah, fantastic. That is absolutely wicked. How have you done that then? So you thread the little plumbing doodah into the top cap, of the steerer, and then uh, do you think that works on like other bikes? I like that. I would have thought so. I don't see why not. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, this could be an example of, of same pieces of equipment being far more expensive in the cycling world than in the plumbing world. Yeah. And other worlds. That's it. Those aerodynamic carbon fiber plumbing frames <laughs> are uh, a ten a penny, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I think that's a hack. I'd say that's a Given hack that as well. I just about understand what you're <laughs> uh, you saying. Uh, our last one is a set of pictures that came in. We haven't been describing these for podcast listeners, have we, very well? No, Let's well, poor old podcast one. listeners. They're having to make do with subpar audio as well, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I haven't got the podcast mics anymore. Can you hear us? <laughs> Bit echoey. Um, these sets of pictures came in, oh, they didn't come in because they're from our colleague Jacob, who's they in the office Jacob, with yeah. us. Uh, this is a front mounted bar bag on a mountain bike, and whoever Jacob's friend is has basically mounted a sort of a brake lever right on the inside of the bar next to the stem to support the bike bar. The bike bar? Bar bag? The bar bag and make sure it's more stable. That is wicked. I like this a great deal. Um, I don't really like. Are they like... particularly unstable? I've not used. Bar oh, they bags can bounce much. around. Yeah, like they're fine most of the time. Some are worse than others, but any kind of like stabilising mechanism would be well received. And to repurpose one of those, you know, the brake levers that we're talking about, they're kind of like um, they're like the ones that sort of they plumb into your existing brake cable, don't they? And then they just like, do you know the ones I mean? No. They've got a really derogatory name that I don't think. I think was sort of like. Oh, I see the, what, what you used to have on cyclocross bikes. That's you right. You have a second set of brakes. Are they on called the like suicide there? levers or something like that? Might have been something like yeah, that. Where yeah, where you basically just hang on to the tops, but you didn't have brake levers. No, I thought you did like a mini one. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a proper brake lever, but it, but it effectively is more um, effective. Mm. Uh, well, I'm saying hack. I'm going to say hack. You are yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah and we're going to finish with what I'm already saying is a hack. This has been sent to us by Esso. Well, it hasn't. We found it, courtesy of John Canning. John Canning's we? found it, yeah. He stumbled upon it at his local petrol station, gas station. Um, and it turns out that uh, Esso, which is a big 
petrol company here in the UK are creating bespoke bike work stands. This is fantastic. Well, is it fantastic, Dan, or is it greenwashing? I think it's fantastic. I don't know. Well, people aren't going to stop driving, are they? So if we can if we can fill each and every uh, fuel station with a bike stand and the relative the various tools that you need to fix your bike and a pump, etc. Looks like a it's not even a pump, is it? It's a it's a what do you call them? Don't know, what Automatic. Oh no, it's a, look, it's a track pump there. Oh yeah, it is. I thought it was a generator thing. Oh, that would be cool. No, so it's like it's a track pump built into a work stand with a multi-tool. Looks like a cone spanner yep. attached to it. A couple of screwdrivers. Couple of screwdrivers. No, I agree. I think it's kind of cool. You can't you can't say that no, it's crap it's just fantastic. because it's well a done, petrol so. company. But yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, uh, as well as you said at the beginning of the show, Killian's nearly fixed the uploader, hasn't he? He should have done by now. That's cool, isn't he? He's a nice guy. Killian. He is a nice guy. He just needed yeah. a bit of a kick at the backside. Did he? Mm. Okay. Big one. Yeah, all right. Feast your eyes on it again, folks. <laughs> the GCN Camelback water bottle up for grabs in caption competition. That part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on one of these. And it really is coveted. It, isn't is, it? it is right now, yeah. Like, like the presenters were all like diving into the box full of them. I don't think that there have been bottles on this universe more coveted before. No. Than these ones. No. I like the fact that, that like the printing on it is like slightly embossed. I know. It's very cool. Yeah, because last time we had Camelback bottles it was flush, I think, wasn't it? That's it, yeah. I've never I've never experienced a water bottle like this. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Anyway, uh, all you gotta do is put a witty <laughs> caption in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. Uh, we will start with the results from last week. We will. Uh, last week's photo to remind you was of Jens the Beerman's um, legs akimbo at the end of Paris Bay as he slumped on the floor after a very hard addition. Our winner this week is Adam Fincham 1039 who put, quick, get a midwife. He's having a Paris Roux baby. Hey! <laughs> that is good. So I screen grabbed that as soon as he saw it last I week. I did, genuinely. So impressed was he? Yep, I, uh, I, I got that on Tuesday night. Um, and uh, you know, actually I'm glad I did because nothing else has come close in my mind. That was right. good. So a Very few good. Like, notable extras. Um, anyway, this week uh, we've got Tom Pidcock, haven't we? Literally just across the line from winning Amstel Gold at the weekend. Hugging, now that's not a toy poodle. What is it? Is it a King Charles Spaniel? I've got no idea. He's, I think he's hugging a King Charles Spaniel or getting a big lick yeah. on the face. It's, it's a dog, I know that much. Yeah. Uh, right, I will get you started. When I asked you to bring my dog to the finish line, I was only being tongue in cheek. Hey, there you go. It's not, I, I think not it's technically in his cheek, is it? It's just on the- uh, On his cheek. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot a lot of places you can go with this now. Like, has the dog humanised Tom Pidcock? That's a whole <laughs> avenue of caption down there. Um, if you think you've got what it takes, just put your caption in the comment section down below and we will pick a winner next week. And they'll get a GCN Camelback yeah. bottle. Some comments now from the last seven days worth of GCN videos before we tell you what's coming up on the channel this week. A uh, few from underneath last week's show, Lumi OZ6ND put, the lack of mics is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. With a, with a few comments on the mics. One or two. So we, yeah, one or two. Most of them seemingly saying how they're really upset that they'd gone. Yeah. Because they loved that uh, they were so big and obscured yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're just broken at the moment. We've got Killian fixing them, haven't we? So they'll yeah. be back for next week. Back next week, you'll be pleased to hear. <laughs> uh, Sterling 1989, uh, you remember we were talking about why there are so many huge crashes in pro cycling at the moment, or seemingly so. Uh, so Sterling 1989, but the reason Matthew van der Poel isn't involved in crashes is because he's two minutes ahead of the action uh, in the peloton. Yeah. Although he wasn't at Amstel on Sunday, he still didn't crash. No, although, to be fair, I saw it somewhere. I remember he was on Twitter saying that Matthew Van der Poel looks more like he's going to crash when he's on his own because he goes so fast yeah. around corners. And I mean, he's just so good, isn't he? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then uh, Orazulitic uh, said, Today I was waiting in the ER for my x ray after a bike crash. Oh, ouchie, when I get the notification of this show. Come on, don't be too actual. Um, I think I know what you mean there. But yeah, I hope you're all right. I hope the x ray came out and it was not a fracture. Yeah, well, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, uh, it was the finger. Don't cross it. 
if it's yeah. <laughs> yeah that could make things worse yeah it could underneath yeah. the calorie counting video is it a myth that ollie did for us on sunday matthew rose 2951 put hats off to dr bridgewood for lifting a glass of amstel at 508 into the video that drops on the same sunday as amstel gold is being raced we appreciate this level of attention to detail all planned I'm sure it was. All planned. Wouldn't surprise me with Ollie, actually. No. He doesn't um, have an attention to detail, does That's he? right. Morton Prom said, uh, great you added the info about nuts. Uh, I considered that pretty hardcore knowledge, so it gives the rest of the video lots of credibility. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's Ollie, isn't it? Of course it's credible. I know, yeah. Uh, he loves it, doesn't he? He does I mean, the amount, the amount of chat that he has around the office about geeky stuff that he loves. I love yeah. it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Just, I just like to take the mick out of him. <laughs> Under the Lotto Destiny bus tour, which is the first one we've done in a while, R Done 1971. It's been such a long time since the last bus tour, I love them. Well, it's Digital B11, but finally, the bus tour is back. Yeah, a few of you seem to have missed them over the last. I think we exhausted them, didn't we, in the initial years of GCN. There were no fresh ones to do, but. Well, that's right, yeah, but now, it's been a while, so uh, yeah, buses are, buses are back on. Um, Alex is heading out to the Giro d'Italia, is which is just a month, less than a month away now, isn't it? That's probably three weeks just Whoa. under. Whoa! Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I, think, I mean, you know, we talk a lot about whether the season needs to be changed, so it's a, a better narrative, more easily understood by the general public who aren't into cycling, but when you're in it, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Oh. Things just lead on to big race to big race. Oh, we've got the Giro d'Italia just around the corner. That's it, yeah. So uh, once Liège is gone, then we've got Romandy, and we've started to gear up to stage races, yep. and then, yeah, Giro, Criterium de Dauphiné, Tour. Swiss. So, oh, yeah, Tour of Swiss, yeah. Tour, Olympics. Yeah. Tour de France, Fan of Zwift, yeah. World Champs. Welter. Like non stop, yeah, Welter. Yeah. Blimey. Uh, and we've got Unbound thrown in the mix as well in the Gravel World Series. Lot to like, yeah. isn't it? Lot to like. Um, right then, what is coming up on GCN over the next seven days? Well, on Wednesday, we are going to show you how to train for endurance cycling. Uh, for those aspirational roads that make you want to. Sit in the saddle this for another, hours and hours. This is another PR thing, is it? Well, I just you know, it just made me think of an envy friend <laughs> when you just mentioned that. Uh, well, on Thursday, we're going to show you what you should wear when you are cycling. Mm. Interesting. Uh, on Friday, does caffeine make you faster? So uh, Connor, Hank, and Manon have been doing a bit of experimenting, mm. uh, which uh, is quite intriguing. It's a uh, a double blind study, right? So uh, yeah, oh, I don't know what they're getting. Nope. Nice. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm quite intrigued to know what happens on that one. Um, and then on Saturday, we have found another UCI band bike that promised to revolutionise cycling. So uh, you'll recognise it, I'm sure. It was ridden by Chris Boardman, but is not a Lotus. Um, also, Vyacheslav Ekimov had one. Did he? He did indeed, yeah. Didn't know um, it is a hotter. Is it hotter or notter? <laughs> find out on Saturday. Is uh, it hotter now than it was back then? Well, indeed, yeah. Yeah, anyway, Ollie and I took it for a spin and, um, and s tried to see how fast it was. Yeah. So, yeah, check that one out. And then, Not during the caffeine study. No, it wasn't, actually. Oh, we did have some caffeine oh, midway through, but, yeah, we nice. both willingly ingested Did you have to it. get off at any points where bikes were banned, like over the Hammersmith Bridge, for example? Uh, no, we didn't. You although, can't taking a banned bike over a banned cycling yeah, bridge, wouldn't it? would be cool, it? wouldn't it? Um, Ollie did get told off for sitting in a pub garden uh, that was actually off limits to the public because of the weather. Oh. So uh, I had to field this one. <laughs> the landlady was not happy. So I took one for the team as I sat there and disowned them. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Like, there's no controlling them. Did you say bloody cyclist? <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then on Sunday, I'm really, really excited about this one. So there is an online bike buying and selling platform called Bicycle, so uh, for secondhand bikes, basically. And uh, anyway, they basically said, have two grand each to buy a bike. Two grand? Yeah, what did we buy and which one was the best? How cool is that? Yeah. You honestly, check this, check this thing out. And actually our bikes are back up for sale. Oh. Yeah, on condition of giving us two grand, we had to sell them again. Really? Yeah, we did. Do you going to get more or less for them now they've been used by... Well, Alex was going to sign his top tube. So, <laughs> so much less than... Yeah, basically. You're up for a grand. You can get a bargain <laughs> online now. No, it was super cool, actually. We had a wicked day. 
So uh, yeah, check that one out, it's out on Sunday. Fantastic stuff. Uh, right, that's the end of the GZN show. Uh, don't forget, these t-shirts, including the old lady one right here, are available on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. In all seriousness, uh, your contributions and purchases really do help us out a lot here at GZN, so they're all appreciated. Absolutely, as do your subscriptions and your likes as well, so you know what to do. <laughs>